lives either in Yellowstone National Park or just outside National Park. It was identified as male, which will be important in a second. And then later, uh, you know, this year, the animal linked up with this other uncollared wolf. Colorado Parks and Wildlife had this wolf tranquilized and it has its own tracking collar. The second wolf was also identified as male. So you got two males. So biologists weren't barely thinking about pups from this bear. So the biologists just thought that two male wolves decided to keep each other company? Absolutely, yeah. State biologists say that this is a pretty common behavior for wolves to link up as hunting partners. Uh, that actually earned a joke from Governor Polis. He said that the state might even have its first gay wolves. <laughs> so what changed? Uh, so remember, each of these wolves had tracking collars, which, you know, state biologists watched pretty closely. And the location data showed one of the wolves appeared to have retreated to a den. Now, that made zero sense, right? It's the first wolves born partner. since the 1940s. That's not partner behavior, right? That's, that's, a, that's denning. Colorado. Know? So the female wolf uh, had retreated, or, or the supposedly male wolf had retreated to this den. Colorado biologists called up their counterparts in Wyoming that had originally collared this wolf, and they said, oh, whoops, uh, we actually have some genetic information here. That male wolf is a female wolf. We just made a documentation error. Okay, so this wasn't a pair of male hunting wolves. No, these were a pair of uh, straight know. wolves, if you want to use that human analogy, straight wolves. And uh, when the biologists observed the den site later on, they observed three pups multiple times. They expect there could be any, you know, even more since uh, wolf letters tend to be like four to six pups. First pups so born in Colorado, Colorado since the 1940s. Parks and Wildlife so is pretty exciting. trying to figure out how to Go reintroduce wolves. wolves. If the predators are coming here on their own, and of course and the Republicans own, wanted to like stop the necessary? wolves because they want to yeah, stop a, all good things, good they're terrible. I mean, hunters and ranchers opposed to reintroduction say no. This is actually one of their key arguments during the the ballot question over whether to reintroduce wolves. They said if. if Wolves are going to return to the state on their own. That, that could be a good process. That would be a natural process. Give the time for wolves to adjust and people to adjust to them as well. Um, biologists disagree. They say the question here is what would create a viable, self-sustaining wolf population. And they say that's only possible if wolves are actively brought back to the state as well as migrating get some wolves. In naturally. So they don't think Let's that just this migration here. of a pair every now and then is actually going to bring enough in large numbers? Yeah, because, you know, uh, wolf reintroduction started in Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, uh, you know, more than 20 years ago. In that time, only a few wolves have made it all the way down to Colorado. Uh, you know, it's remarkable that these two wolves have, have found it here and been able to breed. But the question is, will their pups actually have another wolf uh, to breed with when they get to be that age? Do you know if the state's readjusting its plans at all based on the pups? Bring in you know, another family. Really outvote the, the reintroduction, conservatives. Uh, is still going far forward, like under the ballot initiative. They have to get it done by the end of uh, 2023. Um, but the ballot language doesn't include much detail beyond that. So, like, where will Colorado get these wolves? How many should it release? Where should it release them on the western slope? Um, Colorado Parks and Wildlife has formed Good luck, a tactical wolves. Good luck, wolf people. biologists 